There's something growing on your body as we speak that could be used to filter water in the future. I'm not talking about some type of tiny bacteria. It's actually your hair. Researchers at a university in Australia have used human hair to create organic high-tech devices for testing the quality of water. The team took human hair and processed it enough to extract carbon from it. That carbon is then used for checking if there are any unwanted substances in drinking water. Turns out that our hair can be transformed into these carbon particles that can detect specific substances. What's even more interesting is that those substances are different depending on the hair color. For example, dark hair derived carbon is highly sensitive to chemicals like chloroform, while blonde hair derived carbon is more sensitive to metal. If you're thinking about ways to make your hair useful, apart from making you look fabulous, you can always donate it. Some associations in the U.S. report receiving more than 100,000 hair donations each year. If you're interested in doing that, your hair may need to have certain features. For starters, it may need to be a certain length. Most associations do not accept donations of hair that are less than 8 inches. Your hair might also need to be natural, meaning it shouldn't be bleached or processed in any other way. Once you've cut and sent it, it's generally made into a wig and donated further to people in need. Hair can be used in a variety of other ways in our society. What's even greater about human hair is that it's a renewable resource as long as humans continue to grow it. Noticed how your hair gets if you've skipped washing it? It may look greasy and clumped up, but it's actually what it's supposed to do. Hair can absorb a lot of the oils produced by the skin on our heads. So scientists came up with a pretty neat idea. They are now using old hair trimmings to create blankets that can be used to clean up oil spills in the ocean. These hair blankets are more efficient than everything else we've used in the past. Somewhere around 1.1 pounds of hair can absorb 1.5 gallons of oil. Human hair can also be used in advanced technology and may be used to power high-tech gadgets in the future. So far, building solar panels turned out to be expensive, but a Nepali teenager created a solar panel using human hair instead of silicone. Researchers love the idea and are now turning hair into tiny nanodots. These can be used to make even more solar panels on a larger scale. They'll also be cheaper and more efficient than previous models. It's not the only thing these nanodots can be used for. After studying them a bit more, scientists figured out that they also emit a glow. This potentially makes them useful for lighting up screens. So if you think about it, that display on your watch or smartphone may be soon powered by your pretty locks. Hair is ideal for such gadgets because it's more flexible than any previous materials we've used. It may be flexible, but hair is also quite strong. At one point, we may even use it for construction and manufacturing. A study showed that adding human hair to concrete makes it stronger and more foldable. Hair can also be spun into yarn, just like wool or cotton which can be further turned into clothing and other textile products like blankets or even furniture. Okay, don't get grossed out just yet, but scientists have figured out a way to use hair to grow food. Not directly though. For starters, they found that the keratin in hair is ideal for helping plants take root. So they took a pretty resistant plant, the standard salad, and were able to grow it in an environment made out of water and hair. The list of things you can do with your hair doesn't stop here. In November, for example, many people grow out their mustaches to support men's health research. The Movember movement began with 30 Australians and has raised $450 million in 21 countries. You can even use your hair for home improvement projects. Place it into a plaster wall, for instance, if you want some extra reinforcement. Additionally, you can tuck it into garden corners if you want to use it as a repellent for rodents, slugs, and deer. Feeling artistic? You'll be pleased to know artists have used human hair for their creations for many years now. They've taken hair to create necklaces, sound devices, burkas, and even to obtain the record for the longest braid in history. In the past, people wore brooches with the hair of someone who'd passed away to remember them by. Braided hair isn't the only record you can break, you know. Other examples of record-breaking locks have included weaving hundreds of pencils or afro picks into hair, or even dragging a car with a ponytail. Hair can also be used to recognize a person. Historians that have long studied Egyptian mummies have also used hair to help identify a certain ancient ruler. 
we can't finish up this hairy story without looking at some interesting hair facts. Like the fact that hair is mostly made out of the protein keratin, which is also found in animals' horns, hooves, claws, feathers, and beaks. Remember when I said hair is flexible? Turns out that a healthy strand of hair can stretch 30% when wet. Once the hair is processed, through heat or bleaching for example, it gets more brittle and prone to breakage. Ever been on a vacation at the seaside and noticed your hair grow faster? It's just science. Hair does grow faster in warm weather due to the increased blood circulation in our body, particularly on our scalp. Also, I'm sorry to break it to you, but all hair is lifeless except for the hair inside the scalp. Your hair might know more about your body than you do. That's because hair can show what substances have been in the bloodstream, making it common forensic evidence. Chances are, if you're watching this, your hair is black or a pretty dark color. That's because this is the most common hair color. Red hair is the rarest, accounting for only 1% of the population. Blondes may have more fun, but hair that's naturally pale accounts for only 2% of everyone on the planet. The substance responsible for giving that specific color to our hair is called melanin. As we grow older, our bodies go through many changes, and most of us notice getting white hair at one point. The cells in our hair follicles are responsible for that. They start to slow down and produce less pigment. This causes our hair to gradually turn gray and then white. It's a natural part of the aging process and something that happens to everyone eventually. Thankfully, there are a lot of options for coloring hair these days. Here's how hair actually comes to be. A hair strand grows from a small tube-like structure called a hair follicle, which is located in the skin. Inside that hair follicle, there is a tiny hair bulb that contains cells that produce keratin, that protein that makes up the hair strand. The hair bulb also contains blood vessels that provide nutrients to the growing hair. As the hair bulb grows, it pushes the older cells up and out of the follicle, forming the hair strand. This process continues, with new cells being produced at the bottom of the follicle and older cells being pushed out at the top. Over time, the hair strand grows longer and eventually emerges from the skin. Different people have different rates of hair growth, but on average, hair grows about half an inch per month. A lot of things can influence how much your hair grows, like age, genetics, and overall health. Hair can grow on most parts of the body except the palms, soles, eyelids, lips, and mucous membranes. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.